is a government program. Thank you, Joe. Brian. The Michigan healthcare system saved my son's life, and that's the reason, the tipping point for why I got in. We're coming up on August. And when August came around last summer, uh, March shower was high. Because he was afraid of you. He was afraid that you might yell at him or say that you disagreed with him how he was going to vote. And I'll tell you, it's cowardly. And it has a contempt for you and an arrogance that they have down in D.C. that we don't need to listen to you because we have the power. That really set me off. You know, as a congressman, I believe that you have the duty to stand and deliver. Or sometimes you have the duty to stand and receive. And if you're not willing to do that, then get out of the way. Because the people are in charge, not you. I, I say we have the best specialized health care in the world right here in Michigan. I know because of my children's hospital living there for months on end. We have people coming up just all over the country, all over the world, to save their children's lives with various different problems. And that's because they don't do it in other parts of the world. We do it here in Michigan because we have people like Dr. Bobet who can operate on a heart that big and do it well and save children's lives. You know, that was what I was concerned about when Mark Shower goes around and tells everybody, oh, your Medicare benefits won't be uh, affected at all. It reminds me a lot of what I remember in the military is you may rate something. Whether you ever get it is another story. Well, you may get, you may rate the Medicare benefits, but whether you ever get it, that's a totally different story. Seniors have a right to be concerned because this bill ultimately is just cost for them. Insure the provider. What's the provider going to do when uh, they have a lot of bills coming through? They're going to start rationing care, and that's just reality of human nature. That's what businesses do. And they're going to start at the spectrums where it costs the most senior care and neonatal care, where I am. So people have a right to be concerned. When I was in the military, I, I found out later that I had a degenerative disc in my head. I only say that not for sympathy, but to prove a point. I never got in line for the one MRI machine we had at the time at Bell Bell Naval Hospital because my doctor told me, many, many primary doctors I had for my kids, told me it's a sick call that I get. And I can see the future because I see it in the military. And by the way, they have a good system there because we also have a lot of healthy young men and women. We don't have people that get old over time, like it's what happened in the natural way. But because there was one machine there, you had a year-long wait. They didn't want to put me in that year-long wait because I could tolerate my pain with vitamin and 800 milligram motion. And guess what our president said when the whole health care debate kicked off and he was talking about knee replacements and hip replacements? Well, maybe that 70-year-old can tolerate that pain with vitamin N, too. I'm not fooled it. So what would you do? Would you repeal the reform, or what would you do? I signed the repeal and replace the pledge as well. I'm not naive to think that we can get it done until President Obama's gone, but we have time okay. because the bill's not fully implemented until 2014. And once we get a new president, we can get a, a, a patient-centered health care bill that um, we've always talked about in the past. Where, another example, Michigan traditionally has a Blue Cross Blue Shield pre-existing condition coverage. One of the few states that do that. Uh, Pre-existing conditions is something that most Americans agree should be fixed. Insurers should not be allowed to say you can't get it. If I don't win this race and I go out and try to find a job, most employers, if I wasn't a mission, would tell me, you have a son with a pre-existing condition, we're not giving you help. That's wrong. But I believe that we can get most Americans to agree on how to fix that on a bullet by bullet approach and then move on to the next problem and then come out and see how you can fix that instead of the shotgun approach that Mark Shower used to say, let's fix all these problems at once. Trust us, we're the government. We can do it. Well, you'll find out. <laughs> all right, thank you. Before I get the mark, I want to just second what you said. I have a nephew, West Point Academy graduate, who is in the Middle East right now, who said, when I said, well, do you go and get health care? And he's like, <laughs> it takes forever to get it in wait line. So I know what you're talking about, Brian Marvin. Thank you. Well, you know, you mentioned uh, Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security, by the way. Well, with all three programs, we're looking at a hundred trillion dollar uh, unfunded mandate over the next 20 years. Young people in this country are not uh, are not thinking that they're ever going to uh, uh, be eligible and have money available for them when they retire through the current Social Security system. We have a mechanism, uh, for example, in Medicare, to begin to uh, to uh, reform the system. Uh, we have health savings accounts. Uh, uh, Bush was effective, and maybe uh, you were involved in actual uh, uh, making sure that we had that available to us. Health savings accounts, if we uh, put people back in charge of their own health uh, health uh, expenses, we 
because the individuals then, rather than putting uh, money uh, in terms of payroll deduction, uh, will take the same amount of money, have the tax deduction, put it in health savings accounts, and then uh, uh, be responsible for their own health care. Now that, of course, uh, requires an additional catastrophic coverage, a very inexpensive uh, insurance package, which uh, basically tops out that, uh, out that plan. But that provides a, uh, uh, it, it, what it does is puts people back in charge of their own health care. I think that's where we need to be. We can't depend on government because the money simply is not there uh, in, uh, long term. And uh, we have to begin to take some serious, uh, 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 some serious, make some serious efforts to change the system so that it actually is uh, uh, viable over long term. And health savings accounts with respect to Medicare is the way to go. Thank you, Mark. I want to take a, a I'm going to ask you one last question, it'll be fast, then we'll take a five minute break and we'll come back and get questions from you, the audience. And that question is this, if you win the primary and you win against Congressman Mark Schauer, will you this fall join Michelle Bachman's Tea Party Caucus uh, that they just treated the other day? Yeah. I told Michelle that as soon as I arrived that I was signed. I signed the Tea Party, the Tea Party Caucus. Brian? Sure. Yes, and Mark. Help me in. Got you in. All right, thank you, everybody. We'll take a five minute break. We'll come back at uh, 7 22. And we'll start asking questions.